Hey, welcome to Woodport Guitars. Thanks for stopping by, checking out the video. Since my last video, I have been through two hurricanes, a wedding, a father-in-law extended stay, and a major budget crunch in the shop. So usually we're working on some cigar box guitars like this beauty or this beauty. So after Hurricane Milton, we were out of power for a day and out of internet for a week and had time to sit in my own brain and think. And, you know, I just kept, you know, what, what can I make with this, this new tool that's in my shop? And, uh, well, I made a pick and I personalized it, Woodport Guitars. And then I'm thinking a little bit more and I said, well, how about a chord chart? on a pick. This one is in the key of G, tells you over here, tells you the tuning, and it gives you several chords. Somewhere to start. If you've never played guitar, this is somewhere to start. If you've never played cigar box guitar, it could still help, but it's going to look really cool hanging up in your band room, your jam room, your man cave, whatever you want to call it, your she shed. So in not only do we have chords, we've got scales. And we also have them in the key of E because I like playing in the key of E. And scales for the key of G. Now when it comes to these chords, I did, I did spend a little time picking out these chords. And when you, you first build one of these or buy one of these, you know you can play chords with just one finger. But when you get into it, you learn some of these chords, you'll go, hmm. So when you learn some of these chords, different chord shapes, you'll have some options. So you've got a G major. A C, a D with the root on the middle string, F, E, B minor seven, a different shape C, and my favorite chords. A minor and E minor. Now when it comes to the scales, um, I was watching a Del Puckett video and he showed the G minor pentatonic and he taught it down the string. And you can see my dirty marks are on that pentatonic because that's what I play on this a lot. Um, one of the things you'll hear me play a lot in my videos and I play it on every guitar just to see how it sounds because it's kind of a reference for me. What I just played it's all pentatonic minor except for one note. When I do that, that pull off to that note, that's actually in the minor scale. So it's no longer pentatonic minor. This stems from a video by Shane Spiel when he was talking about if you're going to a show to sell your guitars and you have a booth, it can be pretty noisy out there. People are jamming, playing all kinds of different stuff. So if you play something that's inviting, something calm and mellow, inviting, people come in and they'll relax. I'm like, well, they'll hang out longer too. So I took that advice and he was playing something with his stubby slide where he would...
but he was sliding and it sounded really calm and relaxing. So I'm like, I'm gonna play with that. So looking at just the major scale and I'll play this. No timing, just free form. So that's actually the opening theme to my videos, and that's on purpose because I want it to be inviting and relaxing. Uh, that's how I look at building these guitars. It's actually fun and relaxing to me, it's, and I want it to be that way. So that is so that's really by design. That's that's my Shane Spiel advice taken to a theme song for the opening to my channels to be inviting. Don't know if it's working, but that's what I'm doing for now. Um, a lot of times you might hear me just play around with something like... And that's all right out of the pentatonic minor. And it's more, I think, of making muscle memory and ear memory. Just getting to know it. So I had a lot of fun designing these. I have many more that I'm wanting to make. I've got the, excuse me, I've got four string chords and scales coming. Might do six string, I don't know. Uh, I actually had a request for a six string. These are actually two layers with cork on the back. So you can see there's two layers, and the layers run perpendicular to each other, hopefully to help any bowing that may occur. And I have to think about this because I'm in a really humid climate. If a piece of wood wants to move, it is going to have every opportunity to move in the state of Florida, or at least here in Central Florida. So cork on the back, double layer, got a hole to hang it. Um, there. I don't know, I just think they're really neat. So I had a good time making those. I enjoyed it. And then I went a little farther because the laser I'm using has a extended bed. So I made a giant pick. This is my giant pick chord chart. And just the same, it comes in the key of G and E. And yes, I will have scales on this giant pick also. You can find these in my Etsy store, woodportguitar slash Etsy.com, I think. I'm going to leave links to the individual products, which has got some slash number, 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 number. And I'll also just leave a link to the store so you can just go in there and roam around and see what you like. Same thing. These are going to be doubled, double layer. They're going to have the cork on the back and also going to start personalizing these. So if you want to put some kind of saying on here, like, wow, that's a big pick, you'll be able to do that. I mean, wow, that is a big pick. So that's what we, so that's what I've been playing around with um, in my off time. So, but for my regular viewers and ones interested in this, the next video coming out, I am going to talk about making fret markers out of aluminum rod because it just looked like it matched. We stained a neck, we, I, stained a neck with this salmon wood stain. Um, you're looking at it. It's awesome. I really, yeah. And can you see this one on the camera? I actually veneered this headstock with an insert from a Macanudo cigar box. With an insert from a Macanudo cigar box. So that and more will be coming up in the next video. Wait, there is one more thing. Okay.
So on this pure evil, there's been a budget crunch, so I can't just go buy whatever I want and it's killing me, but we'll make it through this. Um, I'm considering this. I hope that's coming in. This is going to be a razor blade. So I wanted to take and see if I couldn't take some aluminum and make a razor blade. And I still have some cuts, some drilling, lots of filing to do. And I want to use it as the tailpiece for pure evil because it's a razor blade. I don't know if you can see that in that camera, hopefully. So tell me what you think. Yes, no. And tell me why. Is it too small? Just not right? Need something else? But that's what's going to be coming up in the next video. And it won't be too terribly long. And I actually might shoot another little quick video. Somebody gave me a bunch of tools. And I don't know what some of them are. So I might do a little tool video. And show you these tools. And maybe you guys can tell me what some of them are. Because some of them I have no idea. I'm just kind of guessing. So that's all for now. That's all for now.